Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here at the Innovative Farmers Association of Ontario Conference, joined now by Dr. Vanya Pankavich of uh, the University of Wisconsin. Uh, Dr. Pankavich, how are you today? I'm good, thank awesome. you. Hey, thanks for taking the time. Um, you just finished a great presentation on the potential for corn to fix its own nitrogen. You've uh, highlighted or isolated or identified a variety of corn in Mexico that can potentially do that. Tell us what you found. So this research started about 10 years ago and we researched a, a variety of corn which can produce a lot of arrow roots in its nodes and produce a lot of nodes. And it's a tall corn that's called the giant corn. And these arrow roots, just after rain, it's able to produce a lot of mucilage. And this mucilage can uh, support a native microbiota. And once these bacteria are living in this mucilage, it's able to fix the atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia. And this ammonia potentially can be used by the plant and help the plant to have more nitrogen. So what levels of nitrogen are we talking about fixing? So we were able to evaluate during the season, uh, during, uh, until five or six months after planting, about 40 to 80% of uh, nitrogen fixing. Wow. Now, Let's, let's talk about the potential for that coming to, to North America and in, in, in the North um, and conventional varieties. Um, how important is the microbiology of Mexico? Is it dependent on being grown in that climate? No, the, the plant is dependent on the climate, but the microbiota can be built up in anywhere. So when we got this uh, plant grew in Madison, Wisconsin, we were able to grow the plant, not until harvest, but we were able to grow the plant. And after rain, uh, we had the mucilage production and this mucilage had its own microbiota and it was fixing nitrogen as well. Yeah, so you've, you've seen evidence now that yeah. the same varieties can do the same things mm -hmm. in, in, in northern growing areas. Um, what, where does the trait come from? So we believe that this trait comes from an ancient variety that's called the Mexicana. And uh, potentially this Mexicana and had some genes that was integrated in this corn, landrace corn. But after the high nitrogen use in the past years, we may, might have lost this. Mm. Now, based on your research, um, are you confident now that you can isolate that trait and breed it into conventional varieties that are grown by farmers across North America? Yeah, we have done some trials, so potentially we are able to transfer and integrate this trait in the corner, in the modern varieties. Uh, so far, we are in the F1 lines, so uh, we are starting to do this right now. And we think about 10 years will be a safe window to say that we can have a corn variety that will have this trait integrate it. Mm. Hey, some other things you need to do. You talked about, you know, obviously doing some agronomic studies and, uh, you know, um, seeing how to manage this type of trait. Yeah. What, what are you focusing on in that perspective? So since this is a very tall plant and it needs um, a lot of uh, humidity and it's grown in the tropics, so it, it needs like 25 to 30 degrees Celsius temperature. So we need to have an adapted uh, variety. We need something that grow in the north part uh, that is not that tall because a tall plant, it will be an a issue for the harvesting process. So all these agronomic studies together with the uh, water utilization by the plant need to be done after uh, having some inbred lines. Well, Dr. Pankovic, um, a great story. Thanks for sharing it. And uh, as I say, we'll wait to see and when these varieties arrive. Yeah, sure. Thank you.